Hello and good afternoon, Dr. Cross. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me too? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Manush Bhakti. I'm the project coordinator and uh, curator for the Regional Science Center and Planetarium uh, Kodikor, which is in Kerala. And uh, we extend a very, very much warm welcome to you to our uh, virtual platform. Uh, it has been our long last that uh, uh, from Zeiss we will get uh, uh, one representative to talk on our channel because we are using the Zeiss planetarium since long. And uh, at this particular center we are using Zeiss planetarium, but uh, all over our council we are using different forms of planetarium. So it is one of our uh, main technical interests uh, that we always uh, pass about. Uh, for the other uh, viewers, we'll just uh, start the program. Uh, but before that, uh, uh, let me tell our other viewers that uh, we welcome you to our 24th anniversary program. Uh, this is the 24th anniversary for our formal anniversary, I would say, even though actually the museum and the uh, planetarium started a little earlier. But if you consider the official uh, inauguration, then this is the 24th uh, anniversary for us. And uh, in, through this uh, program today morning, we have started the program. Uh, we are fortunate that uh, despite his extremely busy uh, schedule, uh, Dr. Cross from uh, Carl Zeiss could uh, attend to our program and could join us. Uh, and uh, we are expecting uh, his lecture, expecting for his lecture. But with this, uh, we actually roll out a program uh, which will culminate into the 25th uh, anniversary of us uh, that will come next year, January 30th. So this year, 29th and 30th, this is the program for the 24th anniversary. And uh, uh, we have tried to we have make and made an attempt to, to keep both sorts of programs, uh, one which concerns uh, the science center aspect of it, uh, and the other one which particularly are interested about the planetarium, because planetarium for our center is extremely important. Uh, just to brief a bit about Dr. Cross, uh, our center uh, is one of the leading planetariums in India, and this one more or less uh, caters to five and a half uh, lakh that would be half a million people a little more than half a million people um, for the year and 60% uh, uh, of our visitors are mainly students but we also get a very large number of family visitors as well um, yeah. personally speaking uh, our uh, organization, in our organization and our experts, uh, we have a general feeling that we have a uh, tilt towards uh, choosing the hybrid planetarium because we still feel that the optomechanical star field is the best to present uh, uh, to the people. The digital is still not that level. But now in the modern era when there we have uh, this dichotomy of viably running a planetarium as well. And you can't expect that there would be complete occupancy throughout the year. So naturally to mix things up a little bit, uh, uh, whereas we present uh, astronomical programs, we also present some multimedia content into it, sometimes bonded, sometimes separately uh, for the full term multimedia content as well. And for that, uh, hybrid is probably the best possible platform which can uh, help us to take out the best of both the, uh, both the fields. And that is why we, we really are looking forward to your presentation uh, where we expect that uh, we'd come to know about the latest uh, that is coming and a little futuristic uh, where we are going from here because uh, we have a major plan of upgrading our planetarium uh, for the coming few years and a planetarium 
Paulo is a big investment, you know. So we would like to understand where really we are going. And that is why we expect that uh, you'd cast uh, an important light into that area where uh, we can understand what the planetarium field in general is going. And probably this will also be helpful for other uh, planetarium experts, uh, many of whom are present in this program. And uh, I can see a few of them particularly. I can right now see Dr. Pramod Galgali. Thank you very much, sir for joining our program and uh, many of our many of us uh, some of our colleagues are also there online uh, we welcome most of them i'll hand over to uh, my colleague uh, mr jam gangopadhyay to give a formal introduction uh, to dr cross uh, and then dr cross it will be over to you uh, this stage is all yours uh, i'll just hand over to mr ganguly for the formal thank introduction you. thank you very much for coming thank you Good evening, uh, everybody, and good evening, uh, particularly Mr. Martin Cross. We are so happy that you are here. And um, before we start into the program and introducing uh, Dr. Martin Cross today, uh, I will just to bring you that actually uh, how this wonder instrument uh, came into being. So it all started in 1903 when uh, Oscar von Miller, a polymath engineer interested in all aspects of science and technology, founded the Dostas Museum in. 1913, astronomer Wolf, uh, Max Wolf, actually suggested to Von Miller uh, to have a device in his museum uh, which will reproduce not only the stars but also the planetary motions. And uh, Von Miller approached the well known optical firm, Carl Zeiss, uh, who in turn agreed to look into the problem. About 19, March 1919, Walter Busfield, the other chief design engineer and later the director of Carl Zeiss, hit upon this idea of projecting the celestial bodies in a dark sky. On October 21, 1923, Professor Busfield demonstrated the project to a Congress of uh, Museum Professionals, and this was the first public official show uh, of planetarium as an instrument. The professional and public, uh, the professional and public reaction was very enthusiastic. So today, the planetary, both as a prime instrument and as an institution, has come a long way since 1923. And we have, and astronomer Ellis Tomsman uh, wrote actually, never before was an instrument created with so much in instructive as this one. Never before one could bewitch, and never before did an instrument speak so directly to the beholders. The machine itself is a precious and aristocratic. The planetarium is a school, a theater, a cinema, in one classroom and under one eternal dome in the sky. So that was a brief introduction and it took nearly uh, three quarters of a century for the distribution network that this coveted device landed up in Calicut in a small, it is a small city in Kerala, which is popularly known as God's own country. And uh, on 30th January, 1997, uh, this planetarium, the Regional Science Center and Planetarium, the first in the Malabar region, uh, was opened with the RFP DP2 model of planetarium, optomical planetarium projector, and later now we have a power dome system, a hybrid system with power dome 4 and RFP DP2 together working in our planetarium. So this was a brief profile about uh, how all this instrument was uh, used. And now actually we have uh, Dr. Martin Kaus, and I will just give a brief uh, profile about he uh, he is very uh, he has a vast experience in this particular field and from 1986 to 1991 actually he were, he joined Carl Zeiss uh, a software engineer uh, in development of uh, software uh, software systems in Carl Zeiss and then. He worked in central R&D as a project manager, and then he worked as a head of the system integration, head of project management, all in Kazais. And uh, then ultimately, he as a pa partner program, head of value management, and today he is the head of the business field planetarium Kazais, Jena in Germany. So. Welcome you, sir, and we are eagerly waiting to hear from you about the latest development which Carl Zeiss is thinking and researching on of your topic today that is influencing factors for a perfect dome image. So you can start. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. First, my uh, warmest greetings from the cold Germany to all of you and my uh, 
promised uh, uh, congratulations to your 21st anniversary and looking forward to your next 25th one. Thank you. So let me start. I hope this will work. So, yes, what I want to tell you, I, today I talk mainly about uh, digital projectors, uh, not about optomechanical projectors, uh, is because optomechanical is quite <laughs> easy uh, in these terms, but uh, in the digital uh, projection system, there are so many factors uh, which can, which will influence your dome image, uh, and so many misconceptions uh, there, so that I want to uh, ex explain you how you can charge a, a really good system at the end. So it's like with uh, uh, consumer cameras uh, with the most megapixels or cars with the most horsepower. Uh, this is uh, not saying anything about the real quality uh, uh, of usage at the end. And uh, you will see it, it is the same with uh, uh, digital projection systems uh, in the planetariums. So uh, we see that many manufacturers use this specification war, like we uh, call it, uh, and uh, to, to have only the highest number uh, and uh, they want to influence you the, uh, that the highest number is the best. But uh, it's uh, beginning with a resolution there, sometimes marketing says you have an 8K system. This is what uh, the, the projectors can output, but at a dome, you see not more than 6K. And I have done an example here in Germany, uh, a 2K, very good uh, install, installed uh, projectors can easily beat a 4K system uh, on the, only on the visual impression. Uh, and same to brightness. Uh, uh, marketing refers to a brightness of, sing of, of a single projectors and most planetarium projectors, uh, with ex uh, except the uh, size one, are uh, designed for cinema. Uh, because cinema is typically the uh, mo most bigger market. And so these cinema projectors, they uh, are typically a uh, one projector system. And uh, one projector system is something different, like a multi-channel system in a planetarium. And the same to contrast. Uh, contrast, uh, there's the, typically you see in, this, uh, in, the, in the brochures the dynamic contrast, uh, which is changing uh, on the con uh, depending on the content you have. And there is a native contrast. Uh, this is a, a, a physical uh, uh, specification, uh, not changing, never changing. And this I will show you now in more detail. First, going to resolution. Uh, sometimes uh, some uh, uh, vendors, they only talk about the cross pixels. What is the, finally the number of pixels all projectors you use theor theoretically can uh, uh, produce. Uh, and uh, they want to believe you that this uh, uh, will result in a high resolution. But uh, if you have a multi-channel systems with plants, mechanical plants or whatever, uh, a difficult geometry uh, uh, projecting around uh, optomechanical uh, projector, for example, then uh, things will change. At the end, I only can recommend you looking on the net pixels. The effective number of pixels uh, you will see on your dome uh, for, your, for, for your image. This is the, uh, the specification really matters, uh, but not uh, uh, gross pixels. Uh, there's an example, two 4K projectors uh, in theory uh, or physically can achieve uh, totally uh, Yes, we can't see your slides. There is no slides. We can't. We can't oh, see. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Fine. Okay, you can start oh. again. Yeah. Sorry for the mistake. We should have cleared this in uh, advance. So this is what was my uh, uh, first presentation slide. Uh, I told you already uh, about the influencing factors in the dome image, 
And then uh, I told you about uh, that uh, marketing uh, sometimes says 8K and what you get is less. Same to brightness, uh, because the brightness uh, typically is defined for a single projector and not for a full dome setting. And then I told you about the contrast, uh, which is often uh, not clear if it's the dynamic contrast or if it's the, if it's the native contrast. So for resolution, uh, there are different specifications, as I said. Uh, gross pixels is the total number of uh, pixels all projectors together can uh, produce, but not project on the dome. The net pixels is the, the real uh, important uh, spec because this is the effective number of pixels on your dome. Uh, but this is depending on the, the blending and uh, how you have to crop the corners. Uh, and I said you, uh, 4K projectors, uh, they, will, they can achieve a total of 70 millions or 80 millions cross pixels, but effective at the end can, can deliver uh, 30 millions uh, typically. So coming to resolution, uh, here you see in a picture, uh, for a full, a two channel full dome system, uh, two projectors on each each side, and uh, in the in the middle you see this blending, this overlapping area, and uh, it's, it's easily to understand that uh, project both projectors will project into the overlapping area, a uh, number of pixel, a number of brightness, uh, but uh, only half of this. Uh, pixels and brightness in this overlapping area can effectively be uh, used. And this is, uh, is one of the factors which is re reducing uh, in a full dome setting uh, the specification of a single projector. Then uh, looking on brightness, uh, the brightness, as I said, the brightness of a projector is not the brightness of the projection system. Uh, uh, typically, uh, brightness specifications on projectors, they are uh, based on an ideal uh, setting, often called peak lumen. And uh, it's also okay because uh, there's nothing else uh, which can be used uh, for comparing different projectors uh, in a single projector setting uh, or in a cinema setting. The peak lumen but the peak lumen does not help you in a planetarium because many, many other factors will uh, influence. And typically, the peak lumen setting of a projector uh, cannot be used. Uh, you would have no contrast. You would have uh, uh, really bad colors, uh, uh, white, uh, unusable white points, and all these cases. So. Uh, and also uh, non-standardized brightness specifications we have seen from manufacturers, uh, something like LED lumens, but this, nobody knows what LED lumens are. Well, this is not, not a common standard. So uh, the real brightness at the end is significantly, often significantly below the specified single projector brightness. And uh, it's very common that uh, the the brightness losses in a dome setting at the end uh, is 50 to 60 percent due to different factors, which I will explain you now. Then contrast, as I said, uh, often used uh, and like the dynamic contrast, uh, depending on the video content. If you have a, a, a dark content, then there is a, a reduced overall brightness level with a bright content, full brightness and less contrast. Uh, so the, the contrast is changing uh, depending what you see. But the native contrast is a physical uh, contrast. He's comparing the maximum brightness of the pro uh, with the maximum brightness of the projector and looks on the residual light with a black signal. And this is uh, what at the end uh, 
brings a lot of advantage and disadvantage in, in a dome system. You will see. With high native contrast, you get a much more homogeneous uh, image uh, and uh, you, are, you can blend uh, software controlled uh, and uh, you do not need a uh, mechanical aperture mask uh, because everything is done, uh, can be done by software. A high contrast rate ratio, also brightness uh, and brightness values on paper do not necessarily, this is a summary, make a good image. Uh, various factors influence the quality and uh, with the right combination of technologies, a projection system with effective 6K, 6K as I said, can easily beat a 8K system or otherwise around a 2K system can be the 4K with the right settings. So here you see a uh, 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 dome uh, is uh, the main uh, main technology uh, technologies uh, for influencing it. It's first the projector, which is te uh, chip technology, optical quality, and brightness resolution contrast, as I said. Then very important and often undervalued uh, and uh, is the lens, because the lens there is uh, does have transmission values, uh, sharpness influence. Uh, color operation and vignette, vignette geometry correction is also very important. Then the blending technology, uh, the, this is the overlap between uh, two projectors or more, sometimes three. Uh, there are different, different technologies uh, and finally the dome uh, where the calibration and uh, alignment is very important. And finally, the reflectivity of the dome color is an important factor, uh, influencing your overall uh, image. Now I go to all these this four uh, factors. First, the projectors. With the DLP technology uh, using uh, with our velvet, for example, uh, you get the this, this stable homogeneous image without fading of colors, uh, not even about a period of time. It's an accurate pixel reproduction because every pixel is uh, uh, produced by a micro mirror and uh, you get a sharp. Uh, Damage. With the Alcos technology, uh, the colors decrease by the time and uh, the deviations between individual projectors are higher and uh, not so homogeneous. But And the, so the pixels are uh, not produced by a mirror and so therefore not so sharp. Then uh, Looking on high contrast projectors, uh, ultra high contrast projectors, uh, they can produce a um, totally black image background. Uh, and this, uh, in, in if you do not, you have the black uh, space image uh, with the stars, there and uh, you, you can have uh, colored pull down movies, then the brilliance of colors is much better with a high contrast. Because clear to understand, uh, no gray background uh, is uh, uh, influencing the colors. And uh, you can, with a ultra high uh, contrast technology, you can fully blend this software, uh, which I explain again later. Then, uh, as a result, uh, looking into the space and uh, uh, you have, uh, you see the st stars uh, really in the back background, uh, you have not a gray area uh, like here on the top of this image. You have a real a nat natural uh, black space. The, what's also uh, very interesting with high contrast uh, projectors is uh, that the objects uh, 
are floating in the space. So if, for example, if you show a, a, a satellite or something like this, uh, it's almost 3D. You do not need any, uh, any uh, glasses or something, uh, but uh, the high contrast technology is the technology most close to a real 3D system, uh, what, is, what is much uh, more expensive and uh, does have does require glasses uh, to, uh, to the uh, audience. Then uh, with LED technology, the same uh, applies for laser technology. Uh, you get a brilliant and more consistent, uh, more consistent, consistent color saturation over the entire lifetime. And uh, the over the, and over about over the entire color spectrum from poor white to absolute absolutely black, and uh, and the brightness level is is it is decreasing a bit uh, here like you see on the graph on the top, but uh, much less than lamp systems uh, which which are decreasing very soon and you have to replace them very often and uh, this is. Uh, LED or laser system typically uh, works for 20,000 or 30,000 hours uh, with almost no uh, degradation. But as I said, uh, mentioned before, the lens, the undervalued lens, uh, often uh, they have uh, the standard lenses, they have a low transmission. Uh, this, uh, and if you have a, 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 a transmission loss, or transmission, uh, let's say, of 65%, what is a loss of 35%, then everything what you put in uh, at the one side is, uh, is reduced uh, in the output. So uh, the, your brightness is reduced by 35%. Uh, your resolution is uh, reduced. Everything is reduced at the end. Uh, this, this you have to be aware. And the specifications you, you read in the projector brochure uh, after lens, they are different. And uh, same to reflections and stray light within the lens. Uh, they also lead to brightening and at the end, uh, contrast reduction uh, of the projected, Im projected, Im projected image. And same to colors, because you have these uh, bluish color defects, which are seen here on this uh, microscopic image. Uh, this is also from uh, coming from uh, uh, the, not the best color correction of lenses. And this is very expensive to make uh, really good lenses. And by the way, this is a core competence of card size. Again, uh, Looking, looking here, all, uh, all uh, commercial pro projectors, uh, with ex uh, except of the LED velvet from Card Size, are uh, developed for flat screen, it's flat screen cinemas. And uh, here you see a, a geometry which is very logical. If, uh, if you project uh, a flat screen with a flat screen lens on a curved screen, you, you always have to get a compromise uh, because you uh, have to focus on, a, on a something like a mean value between uh, the flat screen and your uh, curved screen. And you, you only will get a few uh, uh, areas on your dome, which you see what you see here, where are really sharp, only where the, your mean uh, focus uh, value is, is cutting your uh, curved screen there you have a sharp image and on all the areas uh, on all other areas you do not have a sharp image you have a kind of compromise and uh, this is a difference of a plan of a, of a curved screen or, or a dome screen lens and all the uh, cinema lenses also reducing at the end your, uh, the result, you put your input result to the output. Yeah, 
So the Zeiss lenses are all uh, adapted to dome projection because uh, Zeiss uh, projectors are developed for domes, not for cinemas. You will not find one in a cinema, uh, only in domes. Uh, the stray light, uh, no stray light, no brightening of the dome image. Uh, so it's also supporting uh, the performance of uh, high contrast uh, projectors uh, in uh, optimizing uh, the perfect black. And uh, what we also look about always is high transmission rates of 90 to 95%. Uh, so for example, a fish eye, a full dome fish eye lens definitely does have not the same uh, transmission like a, a single area lens. Uh, this is what uh, that is the difference between 90 and 50, 95 percent. The fish eyes more 90, and uh, the other ones uh, uh, are more 95. So at then 10 to 5 to 10 percent uh, losses, and also the vignetting. This is very important uh, to the color at the end. So again, uh, size curved uh, lens does uh, produce sharp image on all uh, uh, on all uh, the areas of your curved screen. This is an ideal uh, uh, picture. For sure, there is a difference between an 8-meter dome and a 23-meter dome. The cur curvature is different, and there is also a little... This is idealized for... for a medium dome of uh, 14 meters. And certainly we do not have special lenses for eight meter or uh, 23 meter. Uh, then also a little compromise is there, but all our lenses are designed for curved screens. And uh, if you would uh, project uh, with a Zeiss with a uh, blind times lens, uh, a single image on, the, on, the, on, a, on a flat screen, you would uh, see something like a cushion. Uh, it's uh, not a not not a rectangle, rectangle, uh, rectangle, angular uh, picture. It's then it is a cushion shaped picture. So, also the strengths of the Zeiss lenses are uh, the much better imaging quality and uh, the, the sharpness by nature. I would say. And also the, the color is also a real picture thing. Coming to blending, uh, blending uh, is something needed in a multi-channel system. Only uh, if you use a, a single projector uh, system for inflatable planetarium or something like this, then you do, you do not need blending. But as soon as you have more than one uh, projectors, blending is an uh, art for itself. Uh, for uh, low contrast projectors, you require you need uh, uh, mechanical masks typically uh, to reduce the blend visibility. You see here on the picture uh, the weakness of the mechanical masks are. Uh, you definitely need uh, larger blending areas. This uh, what results in a significant loss of resolution and brightness because everything, as I said, said before, everything in a blending area is at the end is par partially lost. And uh, typically, with with this low contrast uh, and mechanically blended uh, systems, you cannot achieve uh, a, a non-visible blending overlap. You always see it if you uh, project a poor uh, black image to your dome with a, a with mechanical blends, I guarantee you, you will see the blendings in the dome. This can be avoided. And uh, What's also a fact, uh, it's much greater effort. Uh, if you uh, install and realign a blended, a mechanical blended system, this is, I have a, a customer in, 
Moscow Planetarium. He, he do, he's, he's working one week to uh, realign uh, uh, his blended system. And with, uh, uh, without mechanical blends and uh, software blending, this is a job of 15 minutes. Yeah, and at, at the end, uh, it's also a problem uh, in cleaning. Uh, if you have mechanical blends in front of the lens, uh, it's extremely difficult to clean, uh, or it's almost impossible to clean completely. And, uh, and uh, this will also result in a reduction of performance at the end. Here, again, uh, with high contrast projectors, uh, you will not see the blending areas. Uh, at the end, uh, you have to, uh, and the, the blending areas are extremely minimized. Uh, so, and as, as blending uh, with, uh, results in loss, also losses are minimized. And uh, also pixel losses are minimized and uh, uh, also the visibility, there's almost no visibility in, in the blending area. And this is this is a real picture uh, taken from a, from a dome and uh, this high contrast and uh, software blended systems you will not see anything also not in the black in the black with a black background and often you have mechanical in impacts or something like this or, or heat problems this will also influence mechanical blends and with with software blending you just uh, uh, do a recalibration, a software recalibration, and everything is okay again. Then I told you the last uh, big uh, uh, area of, uh, is the dome. Dome ref reflectivity is an important factor. The higher the reflectivity, the brighter the entire projection appears. You can uh, fake a little bit. If you want to uh, make your world brighter, but this will also have uh, some disadvantages uh, as higher the reflectivity, as more cross reflections uh, you get. For example, if you uh, this high reflectivity and if you project a big moon on your uh, dome, then everything around will appear very bright. Uh, and also uh, the colors are faded and uh, uh, the details and sharpness will, will go down. So uh, the lower the dome reflectivity, the higher the contrast of the projection. But on the other side, uh, the lower the dome reflectivity, uh, as more uh, brightness you have to deliver from your projectors. So uh, we typically recommend a dome reflectivity of 35 to 55%. Uh, this has to be uh, adjusted to the projectors you, do, you use. Uh, and uh, the number of projectors and the brightness you deliver, uh, this is something sh should be always considered individ individually. Yeah, here you see a graph with uh, uh, this uh, correlations. Uh, when, uh, when the contrast is decreasing, uh, brighten, uh, the brightness uh, uh, is increasing and uh, the brightness with, with, together with cross reflect, reflectivity is also increasing. Yeah. Then uh, also to consider what is your main, uh, your main program. If your priority is on astronomy, then uh, we always would uh, recommend the highest possible contrast you can get, because the brightness is not so important and uh, dome reflectivity should be less than 50%. But if uh, full dome movies, colorful full dome movies are a priority, then the brightness becomes more important. Uh, and uh, depending on the, uh, the the share of program, 
probably another uh, projector uh, should be selected uh, for your dome. Uh, I know that most uh, planetariums, they want, uh, want both uh, astronomy and food dome office. And uh, this is also a challenge. Uh, then definitely you have to go anywhere in the middle and uh, look for the best compromise to have uh, nice movies and a very good uh, background for astronomy teaching. Another dome-related uh, thing is, uh, I already mentioned a bit, the camera-based automated alignment and calibration. Extremely important and work-saving uh, when it comes to realignment uh, due to mechanical impacts or, or maintenance or whatever. Uh, if it's uh, with software and camera-based alignment and calibration, it's extremely easy. Just turn a ball, press a button and uh, wait 15 minutes, then everything is good again. If you have to do this manually, it's a nightmare and it can take you Days, uh, especially in in, in 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 warm areas, in hot areas, is also important because also heat sometimes leads to little uh, decalibrations uh, of a system. Yes, uh, color calibration and uh, white calibration uh, also important. Uh, because uh, projectors, they uh, are always a little bit different and one is a little bit stronger and the other one is a little, weak, a little bit weaker. Not much, but a bit, and uh, therefore uh, also uh, automated uh, camera-based calibration is of highest value. Otherwise, you have to do it with your eyes and uh, this is not always reliable. Yeah, kind of summary uh, when deciding on a planetarium system. I recommend uh, not only looking on the projector and uh, uh, the, the uh, parameters in the, uh, in the brochure. I recommend to talk with people uh, able to uh, understand the entire system uh, and uh, design you uh, Full, uh, fully uh, a system uh, tailored for your needs. And, and uh, who can do this best? Typically, uh, somebody who uh, delivers all the different units. Yes, uh, you need suitable projection technologies, uh, high quality optics. Uh, the projection surface, we uh, uh, have to uh, consider the surface uh, of the, or the, the design of the lens, uh, the blending technology, and uh, all the, the overall system. Thank you at this point for your attention. And do you have questions to me? Thank you, Mr. Krauss. And I think uh, the session is open for questions. Uh, anybody from audience uh, would like to ask questions? Please. Anybody? Uh, Dr. Gross, till the time others uh, think about their questions, let me begin with uh, mine. I have a dilemma that, uh, uh, well, uh, it, it was uh, firstly, thank you very much for such a nice and informative presentation. And uh, in that you stressed uh, that uh, it is not the projection system and particularly the digital projection system that matters the most. Uh, we need to look into other things. 
the problem is uh, for us the people who uh, select systems uh, it is rather easier to define the digital device but to define the optics in terms of parameters becomes a difficult proposition what are the uh, possibilities that we can do better there in, in that region so that we can select the better optics i mean you know in india in particular we have to go through a tendering procedure where where parametric comparisons will matter quite a most so unless and until you can prove that some system is better than other or some system is radically required and uh, different from other uh, it, the finance people they will not allow to go through their filters <laughs> so naturally the problem is how do we specify that we also want a better optics number one and number two is uh, you mostly discuss things about the digital platform but uh, how to and what to select for the uh, auto mechanical system as well uh, and what are the latest uh, offerings in that spectrum of the product Yes, uh, for auto mechanical systems, uh, I think first you have to answer wrong uh, questions. Do you want to use the auto mechanical system standalone uh, without a, a full dome uh, system, or uh, do you want it in a hybrid uh, constellation? This is very important. Uh, I think I, I, I think hybrid would be the most preferred choice. Excuse me. Can you repeat? I think hybrid would be the preferred choice because uh, uh, the planetariums they cannot afford two different systems actually. So naturally, hybrid would be the trade-off. A hybrid means uh, it's a combination of auto mechanical and a digital system at the end. Right. Uh, and uh, in uh, with hybrid systems, I extremely important is the hybrid capabilities. Uh, Always, uh, if you if you uh, buy a, a optomechanical system from a from a vendor A and a digital system uh, from a vendor B, then uh, both system are not uh, cannot commun communicate in a native language, but, uh, because they are from different vendors with different uh, uh, internal protocols and languages. Here. I think it's extremely important that uh, for full hybrid capabilities, the software and uh, the software, the opto mechanical system and the digital system have to come from one vendor. This, uh, I, I, it's sure that this is a little a bit uh, egoistic, uh, egoistic, but uh, as soon I guarantee you, as soon you uh, put together. These three uh, components, software, uh, optomechanical, and, and, and uh, digital from different vendors, you always get, get problems. You notice from your other life, as soon as you want to uh, uh, interface different no-native systems in, in industry, in, in, in uh, scientific and research, it is not so easy like interfacing uh, on a native basis uh, from one hand. Then, uh, with uh, regard to the, uh, to the optical uh, performance of uh, optomechanical systems, there are different philosophies in the, in the market. There are optomechanical systems, uh, the philosophy is to uh, show the, the net natural sky as, mo as na most natural as possible. And the other philosophy is uh, to show more than you see in nat nat nature. Uh, and for example, with respect to colors, they make uh, the uh, physically colored uh, stars extremely colorful, like, uh, like you never see it in nature. Uh, or they show you uh, uh, stars which you never see in nature, only with glasses. There are, there are different philosophies around uh, showing more than in nature, uh, but with more, uh, more, more teaching possibilities or showing the nature as it is. This is uh, in general uh, different. Uh, and you, and then uh, 
definitely the quality of the and the brilliance of the stars. Uh, it's also depending on the technology. Uh, for example, if you use a fiber uh, glass uh, uh, produce stars uh, with fibers, then this is the most sharp and uh, the most uh, uh, the smallest possible uh, star you can produce, uh, smallest possible and brightest possible. Uh, we have done some uh, research. It is uh, relating to a 70 or 80 case, theoretically to a 70 or 80 K system, which you never get in a digital world or not, not yet. Uh, and others, they produce uh, uh, the stars by masks, which uh, does not deliver this, this brightness, but uh, with masks, you can definitely uh, produce more stars because it's much easier. In a mask, you have only to uh, burn a hole. Then you have a star uh, with uh, optical fibers. You have to add a fiber. And uh, this is uh, with regard to stars. Uh, and uh, yeah. So hybrid function or standalone star quality nature or uh, or more didactic this would be uh, some some factors i would uh, recommend to consider so Klaus, i have one question so normally we, actually we have uh, our hybrid system is equipped with uh, rapdp2 as a projector and jvc uh, as a uh, digital projection system but when we project the hybrid, for example, when the movie comes up, uh, the sky brightness turns up. And what has to happen is actually uh, if we have to get the pitch black sky of the optomechanical quality, uh, the uh, shutters of the uh, projector, JVC projector either has to be closed or what happens is that the brightness level of the JVC projector should match the brightness level of the optomechanical projector. But with our JVC projector, whatever we have here, we can't actually independently close the mechanical shutter without switching off the projector. Now, what is, yeah. is there a way out in your other devices of the projector which Zeiss has developed where you can actually either there is a matching in the brightness of the optomechanical as well as the digital projection system or whether independently we can um, mechanically close uh, with a mosaic uh, shutter system inside the projector so that the uh, we can get the brightness of the sky uh, when we don't require the movies uh, to be projected. So what do you say? Can you throw some light on this aspect? Yeah, uh, this is always this compromise. Yes. Uh, even a GVZ projectors are one of uh, the best with uh, regard of, 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 of contrast. They also have this remaining uh, uh, background light because you, you, you never can close completely uh, or you have to shut shut down them if you do not want to have any background light with the dual dlp technology uh, of size uh, we definitely can uh, uh, reduce the, the, the remaining uh, background light almost to zero we have the contrast of uh, one to uh, or two point Five million to one, so there is really nothing. But this requires a special technology. Uh, two different DLPs in the system uh, uh, and, and special measures to uh, reduce all the gray light within the projector. Uh, this is a, a very high uh, art uh, of projector technology. And uh, I, I only can uh, solve this with uh, the size velvets, but not with settings of even GVC is very good. If you take a, a Sony or something like this, you will have this problem much in a much uh, greater uh, extent. Uh, any more questions from our visitors? From our yeah, viewers? I have one. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, for a given dome size, how do we arrive at the proper? Uh, Resolution system, for example, a whole host of uh, uh, projector and uh, digital projection systems are available. For example, for a 15 meter dome, whether 2K resolution is better, 4K, 6K, 8K, where do we stop? You know, 
beyond which you know we are only spending money but the improvement in resolution will not really help yeah uh, there is some uh, so, uh, some uh, research uh, that says uh, the human yeah the, the, the normal the medium human eye will not uh, recognize uh, uh, resolutions higher than six six k okay. uh, so uh, it, it looks nice and it's a good uh, uh, promotion if you have eight or probably one time you have to get 10 or 15 or more k but you come into an area where it's only good for for promotion but not for for that what you can uh, recognize at the end. So, uh, but if I have to look on money, uh, then uh, with a 2K system, with a well-adjusted uh, 2K system, and uh, considering all the factors I have mentioned, you can, uh, you can produce and deliver uh, a good, a really good, not, a, not, not only an acceptable, also an, uh, a really good, image okay more four is better sure and uh, probably but uh, when you go from four to six the difference is so small that you have to uh, think about if it's uh, worth paying the money okay but with 2k you definitely get something what is fully okay thank you Yeah. Any more questions from anyone? Uh, you may either uh, type it in the chat box or, or you may kindly uh, switch on your video and uh, audio and uh, may put forth the question immediately. Uh, 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 sir, Dr. Uh, Ravi Kiran asks a question. He asks, uh, uh, what about the availability of 8k shows in the market how many of the 8k shows are available in the market not much i can say not much very few uh, uh, this is something uh, typically the shows come when the uh, the installations uh, are there uh, and in the moment there are not so much installations uh, with uh, real 8k uh, and therefore uh, the availability of shows is very limited. Yep. Uh, I have another question that uh, DLP and Delcos technologies that you have de you have uh, discussed uh, in detail. Uh, why do you place the laser technologies in comparison to them? The laser projectors that are now coming and quite prevalent in the market. The laser projection is uh, depending on the technology quite similar. It's a solid state uh, light source like LED and uh, and it's it's more and more coming. There are also different laser technologies uh, there with external lasers and integrated lasers but laser definitely is uh, to come and uh, brings more performance and uh, more or less the same advantage like LED. Also more cost. So do you think some, that, yeah. some security questions also uh, with lasers you sometimes you need some uh, safety measures in your planetarium okay. to avoid uh, damage of eyes okay okay so right now would you recommend that uh, uh, if the fund permits uh, that one should one should futuristically go for a laser technology Yes, laser definitely is uh, is the future. Okay, and uh, from the point of view of applications, I have a question, uh, Dr. Cross. That uh, normally, whenever we talk about uh, planetarium shows, we only talk about mostly uh, the kind of entertainment shows, uh, either multimedia or even in astronomy. We normally do not go beyond the star positions, asterisms, uh, and a few deep sky objects and all. But do you envisage that any research quality program presentation is also possible in this planetaria? And if so, then where are the resources? Uh, how to adopt them for a serious planetarium? Yeah, there are, there are several ways. Uh, there are a few uh, full-time uh, uh, 
teaching uh, material available, uh, which can be integrated into the Planetarium software. But the future is, uh, I do not know if you have recognized uh, the latest product of uh, Zeiss uh, called Open Dome. This is, uh, at the end, it is a computer uh, uh, a capturing system, which allows everybody just uh, taking uh, the display port cable uh, and uh, uh, connecting a laptop brought in uh, from uh, or a laptop or desktop or whatever and present uh, directly without any uh, any adjustment on the dome uh, on this way you can you can present uh, everybody you can present a powerpoint like we do here but you also can present uh, a full tone uh, uh, application, you can uh, present a YouTube video, you can present uh, 3D cut systems, or you can present a human body or uh, geology or ocean science uh, uh, images directly with, with any conversion, without any conversion, directly, directly on the dome. And I think this is the future because it does not require any rendering, any 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 uh, translating or something. So uh, you can just show everything what is running on a computer on a dome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Please, uh, I have one question. What is the status of uh, our this uh, LED panel domes? In the in the sense that the projection, there is no projection. The dome is itself a uh, mosaic panel. I, I heard that something uh, is already developed or is in the uh, research uh, under uh, the LED dome. LED, yeah, LED dome. Yes. Yeah, we call it. You, can you throw some light on that? What What is it? State yeah, I can. I can. This is also something uh, we can offer. Uh, it is a new technology. Uh, uh, LED panels. Uh, excuse me. Do you have any slides or any pictures of? Uh, I can go into the inter internet side of uh, one me moment. Let me let me check. Yeah, uh, one moment, and I have to. I need a minute. Sure, please take your time. No issue at all. Uh, just a second. Uh, I was not prepared. Do you see, see uh, my 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 screen? No. Then I have to go back one second. One second, you have to say present now, and then. Uh, Turn to that window. Yes. Uh, one second. Okay. I go back into the presentation mode. same issues like before. Is he not home? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it has come. I should go to the website of Casa is uh, to show you. Uh,
Sorry. Now I have got it, okay. Here, uh, the product is called, do you see my slide? Oh. Yeah, 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 now you can see. It's called uh, Zeto, it's the brand name. Uh, it's the LED display technology. Uh, and uh, at the end, there's uh, it's a quite big number of LED PCBs uh, attached to a structure, to a dome-like structure. And uh, you can have a full dome, you can have a tilted dome, you can have a partial dome. You can have uh, 12 meter, 10 meter, 12 meter, or 20 or 30 meter, whatever you want. Uh, <clears throat> but at the end, it is uh, today. It's uh, still a quite expensive technology. Uh, we, we talk about millions. We do not, do not talk about a hundred thousand of dollar or euros. But uh, the, the possibilities you get, uh, they are much uh, higher. You do not need any more an optomechanical projector. You get at what you want. Uh, you can have an 8K, a 10K uh, resolution, uh, and uh, definitely very high contrast, uh, extremely uh, uh, good colors. Uh, what you also have to consider, uh, this is not, uh, this is very heavy, the things. Uh, we talk about many tons, depending on the size. And we talk also about uh, <clears throat> extremely high electrical power you need, depending on the size. But from a technological point of view, it's there. If you want, we can talk about it. Uh, uh, on effect, uh, practically, there is uh, not, there are not many installations today. Uh, one installations uh, installations with the, with the technology uh, Zeiss is using will come on the upcoming expo in Dubai. You will see it in the Saudi Arabian uh, pavilion. Uh any idea, Dr. Cross, uh, what could be the price range for similar uh, domes at the range of 8 to 12 meter? I would say uh, just uh, a gut uh, shot. Six, 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 seven million dollars. Okay, so that's quite expensive still now. Very, very expensive. And yeah. but don't you think that uh, maintenance would be an issue even if a small patch of LEDs uh, go wrong somehow, then that can jeopardize the whole projection system. Yes, typically uh, you uh, you need to, uh, to buy and provide uh, a number of replacement uh, panels. This is highly recommended, right. and it's easily it's easy to replace uh, the single LED uh, panels. That is not not the issue. Probably can be done by the planetarium by itself, but. Uh, there is uh, a question if if the main uh, area of the planetarium is a little bit uh, uh, dusty and you put in a new one, then you will see a little difference. Right, right. right. And the cleanness, then cleanness becomes an, a question, then probably you have to uh, clean first uh, your, uh, your main dome and then this uh, have to be done very carefully, yes. Uh, one thing regarding the single projection systems, we have seen, uh, Dr. Krauss, that uh, we use quite a number of them in 8-meter domes. Uh, there, the lenses are normally 180 lenses. And because yeah. they're 180, the projector uh, needs to be installed uh, a little higher. And when we do that, that creates an obstruction uh, in one part of the dome at least. Now, is there any solution available that is not 180, but rather 170, 175, so that automatically the beam gets a little higher and you don't have to put the projection? Uh, not that I know in the moment. Uh, the thing is, uh, 
a lens development is not a not, a, not an easy thing, uh, and uh, there are not much fish eye lenses uh, around uh, with the capability of uh, one one eighty. Uh, so uh, this that this is a remaining issue in the moment. You theoretically you need a new lens development, but this is an extremely expensive thing. I cannot offer you a, a solution for this problem. Maybe sometimes, perhaps. Uh, and uh, another thing, it's also a personal query for me that uh, sometimes uh, we have to do a planetarium at a budget. So probably we have. Excuse me. Excuse me. I uh, do her. Uh, the, the, the noise level was reduced. Did you change anything? No. No, we didn't change anything. It's all the same. Thank you. I do it very hard to understand. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it works a bit, yeah. I have now highest noise level, then it, it works a bit. Now. Is that okay now? Yeah, it's better. Okay, so... What I was asking is, uh, sometimes we have to go for a small planetarium in India, you know, there are many smaller cities uh, where uh, such aspirations are quite high. And it's a new budget market uh, uh, where small planetariums are a requirement of many institutions. But it so happens that sometimes they only have the bare minimal budget for uh, the hardware system and probably uh, a little bit for the software i was what i was thinking is is there any possibility that uh, the hardware if they procure then with the help of a worldwide telescope or similar type of or open free software it can also be run and there there is some compatibility with uh, the hardware available in the market you mean the computer hardware yes no i mean send it Planetarium hardware that even you provide probably mm -hmm. uh, can they also run on uh, open softwares uh, like uh, worldwide telescope or uh, say nightshade kind of things? Uh, worldwide telescope we can can be run on uh, on the size hardware yes, but otherwise around the size uh, software cannot be run on uh, on an arbitrary computer hardware. Okay. Is this entering or do, did I got your question correctly? No, actually what I was thinking is uh, sometimes the institutions, they almost spend their whole budget on the hardware itself. Now in mm. that case, is it possible for them to have some open source software and use it uh, with your system and run it as a foolproof planetarium? Uh, yes and no. Uh, as I said before, our new tool, Open Dome, in, uh, enables you to use any available uh, software on the market on wall with our system. But then you need this uh, this computer hardware, which is necessary to uh, uh, let everything run in a, on the dome. Just uh, to integrate it into our software system would be a little bit challenging because we have not under, contr under control when they change anything. But with Open Dome, you can you have an external laptop or something like this, and you can just plug in and you can show everything what you can buy, what you, what is open source, what what's available in the internet uh, in the planetarium. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let us uh, wait for some more questions if there is any. Uh, is there any other question from anyone? Mm. No, we don't find any. So we have dragged you for quite a long, Dr. Cross, and uh, thank you so very much for joining us and illuminating us uh, uh, with your profound experience. Uh, uh, we expect you to meet sometimes uh, as a, and probably uh, 
we once again would extend our invitation to you and if you can manage your time we would expect you to be on our channel thank you so very much dr cross thank you so much uh, and what is the time at your place right now here yeah, is now uh, uh, noon uh, well close to uh, it's 12 uh, 12 12 uh, 47 okay <laughs> so i'm ready for i'm ready for lunch now <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what the Titan? Well, uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Cross, uh, and thank you all our viewers uh, who joined this uh, mm -hmm. uh, session. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, three more session, four more sessions actually. Uh, we will post their timings and all, and we'll expect that you will join with us once again. And, uh, yeah, and in this context of today's meeting, actually, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Anjanav Moitro, uh, who actually coordinated between RSCP Calicut and uh, Carl Zeiss, uh, and uh, we could have you today in our platform. So it was very good of him, and thank you very much. Put yes, I see him online, and uh, uh, Mr. Mitra, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for uh, coming online and uh, being with us and supporting us all the time. Uh, with all these issues. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you also. And uh, if anything is open and your questions are coming up, uh, please contact. Uh, Shall we? Enjoy. My turn. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.